Hello everybody, John here. And today on To The Garage, we're doing another Secrets of the XK8. And today we're going under the boot floor and have a little look at the tool kit that comes included with the XK8. We're gonna have a look at a couple of quirky features of it. Um, one very unusual inclusion, at least in today's generation of cars and uh, a little bit of a backstory that you might find interesting about the kit itself. So, let's have a go. Oops, if we lift our boot floor panel out. Tidy that up. We get to our spare wheel well. And as you all know, the XK8 comes with a space saver. Some of you may have a bright orange space saver. If you've got bright orange, that means it's an alloy wheel. The black ones are in the earlier cars or as a cheaper option. First thing is the gadget that you use to hold the um, spare wheel down into the uh, spare wheel well, the little retainer as it's cranked top. And part of that is to act as a support for the boot floor when it's in position, as well as making a convenient gadget for undoing it. Like so. So that little bolt holds your spare wheel in. It's also the recommended earthing point if you're going to jump start your car. Use that to connect your negative terminal to. Then we can lift out our spare. If you look on the space saver, if you've got steel like this one, right next to the valve, there is actually the date of manufacture of the steel wheel. And for me, it's a 05-96, so uh, January, February, March, April, May 1996, this spare wheel was manufactured, the 28th of, to be exact. Once you've exposed your tool kit, there's this uh, little uh, beige coloured knob in the middle, which you can unscrew. comes out and then you can lift the toolbox out and I've got a bonus item a free pick <laughs> so here we are with our Jaguar toolkit Unfortunately, like Jaguars of slightly older origins, uh, we don't get a nice little openable toolkit with individual spanners in there, but that's something you can make up for yourself. So the major item in here is obviously our jack. And we have a scissor jack. Whoops. Turn him around. And you can see it's branded up. Jaguar XK8. So very specifically made for our car with the right um, head on it to cause the least damage when using the standard jacking points. It's always worth getting these sorts of things um, out now and again and just checking that they are operational because they don't see a lot of action uh, like me. I'm sure most of you wouldn't dream of using this uh, at home. You'd use some sort of uh, trolley jack. But we can see this does work. Um, as long as it's stayed in a boot all its life, it probably will do. But if it has seen some action, be surprised how many of them will be uh, corroded. Um, there's a little plastic wheel on the end, as you've seen, which enables you to drive it by hand which is very useful for bringing it up reasonably quick 
one of the other items in the toolkit is this really rather nice uh, ratcheting socket in effect. And this has got a 3 8 drive in it. So it can actually be used with an extension piece and one of your sockets. Which means you can slip it onto there and use it to lift your car. Reversing the action, you just flip it over and it ratchets the opposite way. Next we come to the wheel brace. And almost uniquely amongst toolkit wheel braces, this is not actually that bad. Um, so we have the correct size socket on the end, obviously for the wheel nuts, no surprise there. But how many times have you tried to undo a wheel with a wheel brace and you can't undo it? Um, and you scrat around for something to extend it with. The Jaguar one has the extension. And what that means is you can usually get enough leverage to undo even the most stubborn of wheel nuts at the roadside in the rain when you really, really need to, which is excellent. I also love that it includes the correct instructions on here, which is when you are undoing anti-clockwise the nut, then you can use the extension piece. When you are tightening the nut, you cannot use the extension piece. And that is just really good practice and good common sense in that you want to tighten the wheel nuts with a shorter tool than the one you're going to use to undo them with. That means they will never be so tight that you can't undo them. So that's just good practice and it's actually shown printed on the tool. Really like that. Nice. Next item here is the locking wheel uh, puzzle nut, for want of a better word. This is what's used to uh, remove the uh, locking wheel nut. And it has two, occasionally three barbs, and they're in different positions. Uh, so there's a, a decent number of combinations to uh, go through before you get back to the same design again. Certainly not infinite, but a decently effective anti-theft uh, device that has enough structural strength that you can actually remove your nut with it. This little gadget, um, which unhelpfully just says, basically, go look at your manual, <laughs> um, is to remove the cover from your locking wheel nut. The locking wheel nut is the one with this little vestigial, what looks like a keyhole slot in it. But don't allow any tyre fitters to put a wrench on that because you'll just destroy a cover. Um, so this is what this little tool is for. It's very difficult to get this thing off. But you take this. You push it until it clicks and then pull and that holds the cap. You push it through. It's basically got a barb in the bottom so it only works one way and you can remove the cover. Um, I think it's quite elegant that they include an actual tool to do that and it works quite effectively. Next item is the front towing eye. On the XK8, the rear towing eye is permanently attached and visible. And you just look below the rear bumper and it's on the right hand side, or at least it is on UK spec cars. 
Um, the towing eye is detachable, very substantial piece, and that's screwed into one of two holes that are um, visible. When you get down below the car, you can see um, two apertures through the under tray, which allow you to screw this into either of them. The slot through there that's been milled in um, enables it to deal with some of the crap and rust that inevitably gets into those holes because as standard they're not covered over and so it enables it to deal with that a lot better and scrape away the rubbish. And then possibly my favourite item in the XK toolkit, lots of people talk about you should chock your wheels. Jaguar actually included a chock in their toolkit. So it's a hinged item. You open it up, there's a little flap inside. You pull the flap back and you've got a chock and quite an effective one at that. It actually has a curve on it, meaning it's not making point contact and it's gonna keep skipping away. That will actually jam into the rubber of your tire and make decent contact. It's actually a really good item. I think it's also maybe a little bit of a nod to the fact that uh, if you're gonna jack up your car, you can obviously put the handbrake on uh, we have automatic, so it's got park, but there are occasions when you need it in uh, neutral to be able to do a piece of work, and the handbrake should be able to hold the car, even if you're lifting the opposing wheel. The reality is, the handbrake on the Jag XK8 is very poor. Um, if it's in perfect condition and perfectly adjustable, adjusted even, um, you know, it'll do a job, but as soon as it goes suboptimal, you might as well not have it. So inclusion of a chock, I think, is a decent nod to that fact. There is an additional slot here. Now, if anybody's uh, got knowledge of exactly what that is, I'd really like to know. Um, I've not seen it filled in on any cars. Uh, I've always thought it has the shape of a spark plug. But I don't think a spark plug is really something that anybody would change roadside on an XK8. It's not five minutes of work. It might be some sort of adapter. I've also pondered that maybe they originally intended some sort of little torch to go in there. Either way, I've never seen that uh, filled in. So I'd love to know from any of you guys what is the intention of that. What I'm going to do with this is what I've done with my other Jags that have the same slot is put a pair of gloves in there and they fit in there quite nicely if you use uh, nitrile or latex gloves Ooh, I'm inflating them I should roll them the other way um, because that's a genuinely useful thing to have at the side of the road if you're mauling a tyre around and yeah you know you think, oh, it ain't that important, you can uh, you can get by without a pair of gloves, surely. It's getting back in the car after you've uh, mauled everything and not covered it, covering it all in grease and oil. And a pair of nitrile gloves fits in there quite nicely. So, <coughs> that is the XK8's toolkit. This I'll give you another little interesting factoid about it. Um, I've had a very unusual uh, career helping all sorts of factories manufacture things in slicker ways and uh, most of it automotive one of the companies that I've assisted is the company who um, manufacture this polystyrene is PU um, foam tool 
holder. Um, put all the bits and pieces in it for Jaguar, Land Rover and many other companies. Usually vacuum wrap them and then ship them line side, line side for fitting into the cars. And I had the privilege of helping that particular company. And it's a little unusual. Um, unfortunately, its sights are now shut. It used to be called Remploy, R-E-M-P-L-O-Y. It's a company in the UK that took on all sorts of engineering work and simple assemblies, testing and packaging, but was unique in that it only employed people who had some form of disability or disadvantage that meant it was difficult for them to get work in conventional factories. Um, I worked um, and helped out a company called Remploy Kits Green, which did supply these. And um, it was an absolute privilege to work with them. Uh, Say, so not really in operation anymore. I think the business might be under a different uh, guise, but certainly the factories aren't. And they employed people who were disabled because they'd lost legs, had childhood, um, ailments, um, had brain injuries, were blind, were deaf, um, had some psychological issues and it was a brilliant, beautiful, wonderful place to work and to assist. Um, everybody just got on with what they needed to do. Issues were just worked around. Um, I know that these um, were assembled, as in packed, by a group of three or four uh, ladies and gentlemen, a little tiny production line, because the volume was quite high, um, who were all blind. And you think about this, this is, this is an ideal task for people who are all blind. It's effectively pokey oat. Um, all the shapes enable them to find the right locations and they did all the assembly work, packaging, back, back wrapping, labelling, etc. for these things. Um, different areas of the factory, different things. A great loss, I feel, to uh, the UK and the UK's well-won reputation for looking after people uh, regardless of their needs. I thought it was amazing. Um, Apparently, it, it had uh, financial issues and, and had to go in the end. But, uh, yeah, so these put together by Remploy. In cleaning up the spare wheel well, I have actually removed a little bit of wax. These, these base spots were uh, excess um, body protecting wax. So what I've done is squirted round some cheap Carnuba based uh, car wax just to protect things. I know this is an XK8 and yours is an XKR, but uh, Tara Carpenter, hi Tara. Um, your boot floor should look exactly the same as this. So you've got to get in there and, and tidy it up. If you're going to be as sad as me, enjoy your new car. While I'm at this, I'd like to thank the legend that is Gary Van Remortel, who's uh, sending me some um, 
hose, some normal hose to repair the damaged uh, breather pipe that I removed in one of the previous videos. Gary, you're a complete legend. Thank you very much. The advantage of having this nice and clean, by the way, is not purely cosmetic, mainly, but um, if you did have a leak, um, which includes a fuel leak in one of these, because the fuel tank's just there, but a boot lid leak, um, corrosion starting to happen. If the floor is nice and clean, you'll notice it a lot easier. There we go. The tool tray will only go on one way. The recess underneath is the same shape as that. 